No one has been more instrumental to our coverage on the Indigenous Voice to Parliament than my colleague, the Northern Australia correspondent, Matt Cunningham. You might have noticed he's been absent from our screens for some time. That's because he's been pretty busy travelling across the country, speaking with Indigenous leaders, traditional landowners, experts and politicians in both government and opposition, creating a one-hour special documentary, The Voice Australia Decides. He joins us now. Matt, good to see you. What is this doco all about? What have you learned? Well, we're trying to explain, really, exactly what the voice to Parliament's about, uh, Laura, and I think that that's one thing that we've discovered in our travels around the country, and uh, we've travelled everywhere from remote communities in the Northern Territory to uh, our nation's capital to, to the big cities, uh, Melbourne and Sydney, and I think one thing we've really picked up uh, along the way in this journey is that a lot of people, I'd even go as far to say most people, whether they be people living in big cities or whether they be people living in remote Aboriginal communities, don't know a lot about what's being proposed here. They don't know a lot about exactly what the voice is. They don't know a lot about exactly how it's going to operate. So, I mean, part of what we're trying to do here is to allow... Uh, the politicians who are who are uh, supporting the voice and and the advocates supporting the voice to put forward their case uh, for this concept and to explain what the voice is, but we're also putting forward the arguments uh, from the No campaign and those who are against uh, this uh, this change to our constitution. Yeah, right. Nothing really surprises you anymore as you travel to Indigenous communities. I know talking to you day in day out after being in in Alice Springs, the stories are shocking, but throughout this last couple of months, is there anything that stands out to you that is particularly shocking or surprising when it comes to attitudes, solutions or otherwise? Well, I think the key point around the voice is the debate about whether it can do anything to address some of these issues. I mean, we've seen um, and we've covered in great detail those issues uh, in Alice Springs. Uh, you know, I think every Australian would be shocked by what they've seen uh, happening uh, in that part of the world. Uh, and that's the question we're trying to ask. That's the question I've been asking of voice advocates. Can, can the voice do anything to address those issues we're seeing, you know, on the streets in Alice Springs? Can it do anything to address the shocking rates of domestic violence we see here in the Northern Territory, particularly among Aboriginal people? Can it do anything to address issues like child abuse, like kids roaming, you know, the streets late at night uh, unsupervised, like rising levels of youth crime? So, mm. you know, that's the question I'm asking. I suppose it's up to, to the advocates to, to give the answer as to whether it can. I mean, we, we did a lengthy interview with Noel Pearson and he put forward, I think, quite a compelling case about how The Voice uh, can try to address these issues. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have people like Jacinta Price and, and Warren Mundine saying it's just going to be, a, you know, another layer of bureaucracy that's going to do nothing uh, to address these things. Well, huge respect for Noel Pearson, Warren Mundine, Jacinta Price that have kind of been at the forefront of the national debate. But what about these Indigenous leaders in more remote areas that don't have the, the national media spotlight, do, were they giving you compelling arguments on, on either side either, as, as well, I should say? Well, one, one interesting thing we did was travel to Groot Island now in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Now, Groot Island uh, is a place uh, where, you know, I, I'd say things are really improving and there's some really good things happening there, and a lot of that is based around local decision-making. So they're being uh, empowered more and more to make their own decisions, whether that's around housing, whether it's around education, whether it's around employment, and they're having some really good outcomes. And, and the people you speak to on Groot Island, um, they say that they want control of their own affairs. They want to be able to have control of that decision-making. Um, the An Anandili Aqua Land Council, its official mm -hmm. position is that it supports the voice to parliament and it sees the voice to parliament fitting in um, to that local decision making. But at the same time, a lot of the people we spoke to on the ground there didn't know a lot about the voice to parliament. Some of the people there we spoke <laughs> to there knew nothing about the voice to parliament at all. So yeah. I I'm not sure at the moment that the voice is a front and centre conversation that happens uh, in a lot of these communities. I think they're, they're more concerned a lot of the time about, you know, the day-to-day -day issues that they face. And, and, you know, we know that they have lots of issues, whether they be mm. around housing, education, cost of living, all of the issues that everyday Australians deal with, they're facing as well. So I'm not sure that this concept of the voice has really 
kicked in for them yet. And uh, I think at this stage, a lot of people are still unaware of exactly what's being proposed. Yeah, I think you're right, Matt, but we're still uh, a couple of months away. We don't even have a, a date yet and we're not in a kind of a pointed campaign uh, period, but we'll see how that all goes. I think it will focus the mind as we get a little closer to the date when we finally get a date for a vote. But, uh, Matt, most importantly, does this mean we can have you back now, day to day, on AM Agenda, <laughs> breaking stories like you do? Do best. Well, my, my my wife and kids have been asking the same question, Laura. So um, you know, they've got me back now. And yes, you, you can you can very shortly have me back uh, on AM Agenda. And I'm pretty keen to get back into uh, into the daily grind of news Good. reporting because uh, I mean this is a first for me to do something uh, long form like this. But uh, you know, I'm certainly. Keen to get back on your show as soon as I can. Good. I can't wait, Matt. And uh, when we have you back, our viewers always know that you're right at the top of the bulletin. So we're looking forward to that. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Well, the one-hour special documentary, The Voice Australia Decides, hosted by Matt, will premiere on Tuesday, the 25th of July. That's at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Broadcast on Sky News Australia as well as the new dedicated channel, Sky News, The Voice Debate, which launch launches the same day on Foxtel Channel 603.